This map is going to change our entire world. Just this one simple map. What do you think about that? That's a pretty big statement. Better know what you're talking about. Better have a good idea. Better have a good plan. Better be able to explain what this is. So I better get to it, right? So here, here, personal space. This is just you, nobody else. That is your boundary around you. Whenever say get out of my space, or I don't want you inside of me, this is your boundary that is sovereign to every human being, that everyone has the sovereign right to have their own personal space. This is very important to get. These people get lost in the other spaces. They're always in the one-on-one -on -one space and a couple. They never leave it. They never get their own personal space. And then they wonder why they got problems. Everybody needs their own time for their own personal space. And it's up to everyone to choose just how much they need, how they get it, and what they do with it. That's your sovereign right as a human being. Everybody has that. And that has to be like an essential freedom on our planet. When the group space tries to control our personal space to a point that is beyond our sovereignty, that's a problem. And that's what's happening right now on the planet. The group space has gone nuts on. Disappeared the community space. Pretends to be the community space. Says it's a community space, but it's not. It's a group space taking jurisdiction over the community space. And that's another major problem on the planet. You need the right maps to interpret reality in a methodology that has you actually understand what's going on. Right? We need to understand together what is occurring and then have the right tools, maps being one of them, to go forward together as a collective and as a society and as a whole planet and as a species. And so at different points in time, different people come forward with certain maps like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And everyone goes, good idea. They adopt it. Everyone uses it. Everyone has the same reference point in their mind to interpret reality. And we're moving from this linear type thinking into more systems like Pattern mind, abstract mind, conceptual arrangements. So behind me in the sacred space, hidden up until now, but maybe contained within my head, the sacred space. This brings in the sacred, but doesn't get adapted by a worldview. We have to look at the sacred space as again, existing for everyone, all times from everywhere, you don't need a certain word to get there, but some intention is necessary. Some methodology. Every worldview has a different kind. Let's just acknowledge that it exists and bring it into our species norm and go outside of our individualistic type of methodology to get there because that's what creates all the conflict. This is God. This is God. This is God. This is God. That's not God. That's not God. And just using the God word is, is bad enough, right? I'm nailed because there's a thousand names for God. So this map can be programmed with values. That's what the green conduits are. You program the spaces with values, values you choose. At personal space, I like wisdom. At one-on-one -on -one space, I have love. At group space, I have humor. And at community space, I have justice. Sacred space, I have surrender. That's just mine. You can choose whatever you want. But we have a common reference point here to look at what real boundaries are and what are the main ones and how to utilize that cognitive space by programming it with high values, which are the connections to that which is sacred, given different names. I mean, you're going to find wisdom in all the worldviews, I'll bet. 
you're going to find love in all the world you so these values can be universal so we use them to program the spaces in a very unique way that creates a field of realization that is like you taking your intention taking your consciousness making a choice programming your field with high values that's like a science that's at the essence of reprogramming our dna and programming our minds programming our groups programming our communities programming through conscious ai where we are the ai we are the ones that are stepping into a collective field of intelligence where we are now each a neuron we are each part of this whole and so how are we going to come together in our collective thinking organizing conceptualizing because then that goes into the software and that goes into the infotech of how to really create a new economic paradigm creating shared knowledge communities creating new entities new organizations that are built upon a higher level of consciousness one that is good for everybody so how are you going to argue with it? so at some point there's this distinction between the old paradigm programmed by fear and the new paradigm programmed by love this is the real evolution this is the real background pattern to what is occurring where do you want to go into the future into the new paradigm of love or do you want to stay in the past with the paradigm of fear in the present moment it's when you choose it's a decision point a choice point every moment where you're choosing how am i going to put my attention where am i going to place my intention who am i as a human being what do i want to create what kind of world do i want to leave to the seven generations coming behind me and start asking bigger and bigger questions and see what comes through you know go into your sacred space and ask questions it's a great use of it find out what happens listen to your intuition trust what comes through we all have inner guidance the more we go outside of ourselves for external truths by outside authorities the more we lose touch with that which is our own inner guidance system and that's what you want to be in touch with your own intuition connection to soul the real stuff Woo. all right